So that's it for the heater. Did you want to talk about the quick change system itself? Yeah. Big spec points of Revo are no tools, no experience, no documentation. Right. And this is the coolest thing about having it on the, like the trade show stand and showing it to people um, is someone who has literally never seen it before and you whip it out. And I, I, I think I did this to Dan Barus of Slice. He'd never seen it before. He sidles <laughs> up to the stand. And I put it in his hands. And I'm like, rock on. Um, and, you know, I, we have a good relationship with those guys. I say, you know, they're competitors, but sportsmanship. Yeah. like yeah, know, Professional relationship. And, yeah, and we take the piss out of each other on the internet here and there. And like, yeah, it's good fun. <laughs> like, you yeah. got to have fun. You got to have fun. Yeah. But also, you know, they give credit to us for what we've done and, you know, where we've been inspired by Slice um, in the Revo system, we intend to give credit there as well. So, uh, you know, we have a respectful competitor relationship, I'd say. Anyway, so I dumped this thing in Dan's hands and I'm <laughs> like, go change a nozzle. Um, and I give him another nozzle and he's never seen it before. Now, Dan, Reaching for the tool. Prob- <laughs> yeah. Um, Dan probably knows something about hot ends, I imagine. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm taking a look at that. Um, <laughs> he's immediately able to figure out how to change a nozzle. Um, there's nothing, you know, no tools, no anything. Everything's happening cold, so you no longer have to touch 300 degrees T things while they're running, while the electricity is live, pumping heat into the heater and grab it with pliers. That, that is... That is not a thing. Um, and it's not a thing that we think is appropriate to expect of users um, in the current state of our technology. Um, that's just not, like, that's not going to cut it. As things are starting to get a little bit more mainstream, you, you have people that have no background. Like, for a lot of people, 3D printing is a hobby, right? You, you get into it because it's the printer itself is the hobby. But now you're seeing people where it's like, Oh, I just want one for work so we can print some models of things we're designing. We're an architectural firm. I don't know electronics. There's magic pixies in there. I don't want to touch that. So here's a wrench, heat it up to 300 and change the nozzle, but don't accidentally crush this wire or you break it. That's great to be gone now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just imagine walking up to any other piece of you know electrical equipment, even advanced. Yeah, like, imagine going up to a, a, a good, like milling machine or just a gaming computer um that's the level of you know people that we're dealing with uh, that you know build their own gaming computer still you know it's far you don't need tools you can pop in ram you can snap out m2 ssds yeah we want that's what we wanted to introduce for revo um and that's the intent so in order to do so, we had to develop a few fundamental technologies. Um, the nozzle changing system is different to most others out there in that there are no threads on the heater to nozzle um, interface. What we have instead is the heater is spring loaded downwards, and then the c- cylindrical portion of the nozzle goes up into a closely tolerance hole inside of the heater, um, and the spring pushes the heater down onto um, the kind of collar of the nozzle, that knurled part that you grab onto and turn is being pushed down. So there's a face-to-face contact there, um, and the cylindrical in- interface contact, whatever you want to call that, um, yeah, have you read the YouTube comments lately? I, you know, folks are there like, but but the heat might not be able to get from the heater to the nozzle well enough. Is that? Like, oh <laughs> it, shit, it works. dude! Like, <laughs> like, Somebody tell Sanjay he might not know this. We we didn't think of that. Like, <laughs> no, we have entire machines for testing that this this works. Um, we have this incredible thing. It doesn't even have a name. It's just called The Rig. Um, and The Rig is an extruder and a hot end um, just with, like, F1 grade telemetry. Um, so I think that, like, we're sampling, like, the load cell at, like, 1,000 hertz to measure the forces um, as temperature measurement. 
as encoders on the filament, as encoders on the drive wheels. Uh, everything is being watched um, to within an inch of its life. Um, and then we push plastic through it and we watch the data. Um, and you can see exactly how much melting you are doing. Um, a Revo absolutely definitely meets and exceeds the um, specification point for as good as, if not better than V6. Even in the absolute worst case tolerance scenario that we allow um, when quality controlling these for the largest internal diameter heater and the smallest internal diameter thing and a bunch of other conditions being in their worst possible um, theoretical state, it still melts more plastic than a V6. Are that you able to you. say what the tolerance is supposed to be for the, the sizing between the hole and the heater and the barrel of no. the... Okay, fair enough. But it, it, it's like a slip fit ream fit. It, it's it's a tight tolerance tool. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the harder aspects. When in the heater heats up, because I know when it's cold, you can go in there and you can loosen it by hand. But when the heater heats up, does it expand into the core? Or is there still, are they still slip fit when it's, but when they're both hot? Because metal expands. So still, 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 still slip fit. Yeah, no, okay. it's still slip fit throughout the whole um, okay. range of its existence. Because um, somebody was asking me that. I'm like, I'm not going to go in there and grab it at 300 degrees. So we'll, we'll let Sanjay answer that. <laughs> no. But um, yeah, what is nice is you have the silicon sock around that. And so whilst grabbing the thing while it's at 300 degrees is not going to be a fun experience, it's kind of like a, oh, ow rather than an instant blistering and kind of crispy bacon fingers. Um, I'm sure everyone has an M7 hex nut somewhere, burn somewhere. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, now, for yeah. screwing into the heat sink, you went with the Hemera style, uh, where it just screws yes. in, and it's, it's the Hemera. Now, did the Hemera come first, or did you design the Hemera screw-in system with Revo in mind? Yeah, we didn't design it with with uh, Revo in mind, um, but it it was there, and it looked like a good choice, and it meant that we could then go and easily take it and put it on a bunch of systems that have been designed around Hemera brakes. Like one question I got a lot was uh, using like some sort of why didn't you guys use like a locking lug system instead of like just like an index and a locking lug, and I figured that was mostly for like manufacturing because now you got to manufacture inside pockets inside your heat sink for it to index off of and all that or is it just simply to keep it compatible the 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 getting enough heat from a heater into a nozzle problem is the thing that everyone thinks about when they think about a quick changing system and they're like oh we're gonna get all the heat into the that problem's actually pretty easy um and i mean it's a big high temperature system and the plastic's coming in cold and like it's a very tolerant system as well, um, because if there's, you know, like a little bit of thermal transfer jump, which there isn't, it's, uh, but, but everyone looks at when making a quick change system, they get very focused on that. Um, but it's actually the other side of the system that kills you if you go wrong. So if your heat sink and cold side, even for just a tiny moment, um, just for a second, exceed the glass transition temperature of PLA, that's it, it's game over. Um, and we tried lugs and many, many other things, um, and we found some things that did work well, um, some less so, and there are other challenges along the way, um, because it's all well and good having lugs, but lugs are not going to transfer heat out of a hot end where the heat needs to get out. And one of the beautiful things about the Hemera brake is the distance between the tube wall at the top to where the heat sink taking the heat off is very low. So you've got this nice thin section. Um, in Revo, it's even better because we make the cold side out of a copper alloy as well, instead of it being stainless, quite similar to the sliced bimetallic heat break system. We're using a hypodermic needle tube. Um, and I 
think the way that we're putting them together is quite different because we have a quite, yeah, this metal to metal sealing process. But the thing about Hamera brake that is really neat is also that it has this like top hat brim, brim in the thing. Um, and that does a whole bunch of thermal spreading exactly at the point where you need to get the heat out. Like right at the point where the heat must get out of the tube, you're taking it out sideways with a copper alloy that's then in hard contact with a heat sink. That is the beauty of the Hamera brake design. And then after that, you have threads. Okay. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, that, okay, that makes sense that you explain that little, that little, uh, the flange there or whatever. So it gives you repeatable for indexing. So you're always going to have the same tool length. And then also that's going to dump right. the heat right into the heat sink right away. Okay. When looking at the quick changing system, that's the hard part of the system. The bit down below is actually really easy. So we'll just use the simplest possible thing, which is a cylinder and a hole in the cylinder and not overcomplicate it because that's actually a very tolerant, easy system to get the heat flowing enough through because there's huge amounts of heat flux going on and everything is just fine down there. And it doesn't care. It's like running at 200 degrees. So it's not. But up there, it's very sensitive. So we used something that we knew worked well um, and made it work even better by going bimetallic um, and using a copper alloy up there. Um, and it also allows for just drop-in backwards compatibility. Um, or It's not quite drop-in, but it allowed us to very easily adapt Hamera to accept Revo systems. Um, and we had been, for a while, developing a micro hot end based on the Hamera heat break um, which Revo then, and that's kind of the genesis of Revo Micro. It's a long, convoluted, messy development story um, that I could give you all the lineage and different projects that kind of convalesced into one, but you wouldn't be interested. <laughs> and it would take a long time. We, we would need a flowchart. Spaghetti diagram. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to have to end it there. I do have to go to work now, unfortunately. Um, Sorry, dude. I would love for you to come on a live stream at some point because there's a whole bunch of subjects we never oh, touched yeah. on and that would open for a Q&A as well. So you're yeah. welcome to come on whenever. We'll work something out for timing because I know you're five hours ahead of me. I'm going into work right now. You're sitting at home, just had dinner. So we'll, we'll figure something yep. out. Um, but I want to thank you for spending the time. This was an awesome chat. I wish we could have gone into more. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, Sanjay. All good, man. I, I've had fun. Um, and yeah, looking forward to a live stream. That'll be good. Yes. That'll be good. We'll fun. work something out. We'll figure something out and I'll post about it when it's all, when we figure something out. Okay. Take nice. care. Have a great day at work, dude. Thank Take you. Care, Cheers. Man. Bye.